All right, folks, welcome back. It is Tuesday, and that means it is day two of the weekday challenge. We're on boards three and boards four. We're playing match points, and we have a couple of ho-hum part scores on the board that don't appear to be too bad. Uh, the thing we want to remember in match points versus imps, in imps we might think, hey, those boards aren't going to be too much, and you're probably right unless something really weird is happening. Uh, swings don't happen in huge ways when you see those sorts of results if everything's going normally. However, in match points, the swing can be as simple as a trick here or there or... 10 points here or there, right? That's the difference between a good top result and a bottom result, basically, in this format. So um, we have no idea how we're doing, obviously, but we can have a pretty good idea that the robot's doing similar stuff because we've been, you know, pretty normal. Uh, first things first, what are we opening this hand, guys? I left you off with this. And for those of you that said one club, no dice. Uh, when we're 4-4 four, four in the minors, we just always open one diamond. And when we're 3-3, three, three, we always open one club. And this is just so when we open one diamond, partner has a much more reliable understanding that we have four of that suit uh, rather than just uh, three sometimes, whereas clubs are more, more likely to be three. All right, so we start with a diamond, and we see a heart past two diamonds. Make your bid, folks. What are you going to bid with this hand? And again, don't worry. You can pause anytime you want. You need more time. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to bid very quickly here, and I'm going to tell you, we opened our hand. We are done bidding. If anyone is going to bid anything, it's going to be partner, and they can choose to do that at their own time. We showed our hand. We have nothing else to say. Do not be tempted to do anything. Double here, which some of you might have thought of, would be a longer diamond suit. Okay, that's all. It would just be a good quality extra length suit. Uh, two diamonds, by the way, if you were also wondering, was just a Q-bid response to one heart. It showed a good 10 or more points and support for hearts. Uh, this two spade bid is probably just some sort of naturalish bid. Yeah, it looks like there are nine cards in the major suits to our left. And then East just jumped to four hearts. Luckily, our partner's on lead. We don't have to figure this one out, so we're just going to pass. We kind of hope they lead a heart, uh, I would say, uh, with... Yeah, they didn't. <laughs> it's uh, All right. Take a moment. Right? Just recognize what happened at trick one. Our partner led the three of diamonds, and we... Just won it with the queen here. Take a second. Make your plan and recognize left-hand opponent opened, or excuse me, overcalled one heart and then showed a natural spade suit, apparently four spades, and then uh, they ended up in their game here. So take a second. Think about your play. So the way you want to start in a, in a lot of these spots is, um, first off, just recognize what happened as far as the auction was concerned. And left-hand opponent showed an opening hand, all right? We started with 13, and the dummy had 12, okay? Uh, and let's just confirm that, make sure there were no other honors played out there, right? You can always do that. All right, so here, dummy had 12. We have 13. That's 25. And let's give West 12. What they said they're supposed to have. That's 37. The most West could have is 13 because this is a best hand tournament. So they can only have an equivalent number of cards to what we're looking at, right? Or points to what we're looking at, okay? So partner has either two or three points. <laughs> and they let a low diamond. So we should know the Ace of Diamonds is not in partner's hand. Just by math, but also just tactics. They wouldn't lead away from this Ace of Diamonds, even though we bid the suit, right? Uh, so the question is, where does that leave us? Like, what are we supposed to be leading here? And uh, what we should also recognize is if, if partner's not taking any tricks, it looks like they're not. Um, what's the clear shape, right? Well, if they're, if they're five hearts and four spades, right? Four spades, five hearts. They're either two, two or three, one in the minors, right? That's all that's left. And they've shown, they've shown one diamond here. You would guess West just has like a something of diamonds or a third of diamonds. And they're getting ready to rough a diamond in this shorthand here. Um, or they just have a club that they're going to lose later, we expect. Um, in these spots, I think it's very normal just to kind of be passive, right? And what I mean by that is I don't want to really give anything up, any position in spades, certainly not anything in clubs. Uh, so I just want to exit a diamond. And unfortunately, <laughs> that might be terrible now. Uh, they get to win their jack there, which is kind of a, a ballsy play by the by the robot there. Let's hope that spade pitch isn't going to make a huge difference. And then a four 
unfortunately. Let's fire back a heart there. Looks like they rough a club back to their hand. Man. Nah. So it's possible we could have done better on defense. We'll take a look at the score afterwards. Unfortunately, uh, it looks like they were able to navigate uh, one less spade loser. And this is a match point problem for us. So let's take a quick peek at this before we get on to the next board. So it, this comes down to just it, would the robot be willing to to do the same thing, basically, uh, depending on what we led back uh, at the point where where I get in. If they just guess that diamond suit the way that they did, they'll take that extra trick. Um, if I lead a spade, they just are kind of forced to play that diamond themselves as well. That would have been the better play, probably, because now uh, at least it opens up our tricks for taking. And now it, it provides some sort of uh, urgency for them to get that diamond uh, position on the table and, and right. Um, the, the robot is obviously counting the points as well, right? So so they are pretty confident that when not only a partner leads a diamond and we play the queen, uh, that they can take that finesse. Uh, and, and honestly, that's a mistake by me, guys. Uh, at the beginning of this hand, uh, what I should have done is is when they lead a diamond, I should just play the king, right? Just to, just to muddy the waters a little bit, right? My partner's not getting in again. I should know this, right? So at this point, you know, my bad here. I think the king is a much better play because not to say that they can't get this right and if they're counting and, and uh, playing the odds, you know, they're, they're, they're likely to get this right anyway and pitch a spade because it's a loser on loser play that we saw earlier anyway, right? But... You know, I could make it just a little bit tougher on them by by having a little false card situation there. Whatever. We'll get on to the next one. We hope that doesn't hurt us too much. Uh, again, it looks like the robot can take 11 tricks on, on most lines there, so we'll hope that holds up for an average. But, again, who knows? All right, here's our 14 count. Uh, if you watched this before, I've, I've, I've said that I will open most of my 14s one no trump. I consider that a win versus the robots. Um, and, honestly, this is a hand... I wouldn't do this in real bridge ever. I would want a five card suit, but this one has three tens, a couple of eights. I like my intermediate cards and I like being just a tad more aggressive with my no Trump ranges in this realm. Okay. Not the real bridge realm in the robot bridge realm right here that we're playing. And so here don't, uh, don't start doing this at home, right? It is, it is not good, especially if you're a little worried about your declarer play, but Looks like we've ended up in a pretty good spot. And the good thing is we've kept them away from a heart fit, it looks like. All right? We have, uh, let's see, what do we have? 14 points. Dummy has seven. So it's kind of a split deck hand, and they have an eight-card heart fit. Uh, so hopefully our one no trump bid kind of got in the way of that process. But as you can see, uh, we have hands that would pretty likely compete to the three level in diamonds. So... You know, it doesn't look like it's going to be that big of a spot for us. But let's take a second, plan up, plan up your play, and recognize that again, it's match points, guys. So we want to be taking as many tricks as we can safely take. And so keep that in mind, and don't forget pause it if you need to. I'm going to start going now, and I'm going to tell you that sometimes the shorthand is declare and this freaks people out sometimes it the, the the position you're at at the table is is kind of uh you know i, I don't know it, it confuses people sometimes to so recognize you have only three diamonds and you have relatively short trump okay so you're going to want to at least start exploring the process of roughing in this shorthand um this is one of those times where you have so many trumps that maybe you could even draw one round of trump before executing this play but here we want to get to the business of voiding ourselves pretty quickly. And now, ooh, take a look at that. Queen of spades. Now we can actually rough very safely with a high card, right, just in case. And now that that's done, when we when we accomplish this goal, folks, right? We've, we've roughed in the shorthand for as many times as we need to, which is what we just did. Now we draw Trump, right? No reason to mess around with anything else at this point. We've accomplished the work we're supposed to accomplish, and now our opponent is just giving tricks away. Right? They're leading away from their spade honors, and this is match points. Let's scoop up all the match points we can. We're going to make uh, oodles of tricks on this hand because now we just need to come to our hand with the ace of clubs, cash that king of spades, pitching a club, and we have the rest. So let's claim city for us, 150 on the plus side. Um, that one you would expect to be pretty, pretty good. However, if we look at the uh, classroom here, 
but they're not going to really get into this auction too much. If we do open a club, what's West going to do? I suppose if they double, they can find a hard fit, but are we really going to let them play two hearts when we have a nine card diamond fit? I would doubt that. Uh, so here, I mean, I guess we'll we'll see on Friday when we scoop up these results, but so far so good. Uh, number three, it looks normal. I mean, I don't know. I, I hope... I hope my choice of returns wasn't disastrous for us, but it's something that they could always accomplish and probably would, uh, knowing how the robots play at, at each of the tables. So, you know, nothing terribly exciting if you look at this card. It's like, man, this is kind of a boring game, but it's bridge, right? We're just trying to do the best we can with what we have. Let's get a sneak preview of Wednesday's hand. Take a look at this one. What do you want to open this one? <laughs> it's going to be a fun one. 17, four by one. Find out tomorrow morning, guys, right here on YouTube. Or if you're watching on BridgeLesson.com, you can watch these videos right there as well. And I will see you tomorrow for the start of board number five and six, guys. Halfway through.